It's just not a survive without a lab coat. Overcome with emotion, I seized Carisu's hand and grasped it firmly. Hey! I'm just impressed at all, you just look like a scientist. Assistant, you you get it, don't you? Get what? Let go. If you're going to do science, you need a lab coat, right? I told Darren over and over, but he wouldn't wear one. But my assistant is different. She put it on before even I said anything. I knew you were meant for this, Christina. You're the best assistant a mad scientist can ask for. I don't know if that's supposed to be a compliment, but it's come across as an insult. Now let go! She shakes off my hand and turns her back to me. I'm giving you that lab coat to commemorate you joining the lab. Don't worry, it's never been worn. Or maybe this fateful encounter between you and that lab coat was exact was decided by destiny long ago. Dao is not wearing it, it was just an inevitability. This is a choice of Steins. Shut up and so we can start the experiment. Chris <laughs> puts both hands into a lab coat pockets and bends down to like take a look at a time machine now placed underneath the table. The previous experiment broke the table and even left a hole in the floor. There's a danger to happen again, so if we successfully re reduce this charge phenomenon, so unfortunately we'll have to leave it on the floor for now. Also, we have some kind of mat now. So, you haven't tampered with a microwave at all. A point to be X68000. Let's code on the screen. It's terminal mode at the moment. We can change the factory settings like this. Make a microwave do things its manufacturer never intended. How is it set when discharge phenomenon occurred? Nothing out of the ordinary, it's factory settings. Uh, I'll take a banana. A bunch of bananas only has three bananas left. Those are me always. Oh, so I don't need your permission when I'm going to buy new bananas tomorrow. Creature takes one banana from a bunch, squats down and places it inside a phone wave named subject to change. She begins to type on her phone. She pushes send, a phone wave named subject to change begins to turn backwards. At 120 seconds, a chime rings. Nothing happened. The banana is still in the microwave, unjellified. Ow! Chrissy yelps as she tries to take out a banana and quickly draws back her hand. She starts blowing on her fingers. It's hot or cold? It's hot! Meaning the microwave has functioned normally. This proves the hidden function Mayori found wasn't a freezing function. We knew that already. Undaunted, Chris throws in a new banana and once again begins reverse rotation for 120 seconds. The second banana warms up too. Can't we produce a gelification phenomenon, much less send mail to the past? What does this mean? I guess what happened earlier was an irregularity after all. I don't know if it's an irregularity or not, but we ought to investigate the cause. I agree. We agree for once. But Caruso's motives and my motives are probably the exact opposite. My assistant here wants to disprove my theory of a phone wave's name subject to change is in fact a time machine. Do you think that actually makes for decent science actually? Good civilization. It's... If you've got one scientist wanting to prove something, and another scientist wanting to disprove something, doing the same experiment together, then not one scientist's bias will happen. In the previous experiment, after spending 120 seconds on a phone wave, banana teleported back to a bunch jellified. Should we consider that it returned to its state 120 seconds before? Wrong. If it returned to its state 120 seconds before, it wouldn't be jellified. So she wants to say that because it was jellified, it didn't have to travel back in time. 
The chicken return just swelled and stayed without terrifying. That logic is dubious. Sure, it ended up frozen, but did you examine the possibility that it might have jellified first? No, I didn't. I think Mayori ate with a free frozen chicken. Salt didn't jellify. You mean nothing changed? After a discharge phenomenon occurred, last time we spent all night experimenting with cabbage, radishes, rice, cognac, melon bread, crunchy kun, cup noodles, and nothing happened. The heck is crunchy kun? A brand of a rice lolly. Popular throughout Japan, in, in addition to a standard soda flavour, over 50 varieties are sold, including cola, grape, and limited promotional flavours. Win may be written on one part of a stick. A winning stick earns a free ice, ice lolly. The chances of winning are about 1 in 50. The same thing with liquids. On that day, a success rate took a 180 degree turn. Before the discharge phenomenon, everything succeeded. After the discharge phenomenon, everything failed. Is a microwave storing electricity? You said that jellified jabbits became fractal structured, right? Salt has a simple structure by nature, so maybe that had an effect. But how could electricity be related? Here we should think under the assumptions of time travel theory. No. It's not good to start thinking from a conclusion. We've already had several successful experiments. You can't deny that. I'm not especially concerned whether or not this thing is a time machine or not. To begin with, it's physically impossible for this tiny little microwave to produce energy equivalent to a big bang. Chris, you found deeply. We can't reproduce the discharge phenomenon. No fractalization. There should be a reason why. We haven't changed our methods, we haven't changed the settings, we haven't changed the experimental subjects either. There must be some variable. Maybe it's the one who observes it. What do you mean by that? Quantum theory. The observer is an important element of the experiment. There were four of us here, but when the discharge phenomenon occurred last time, but before that it occurred when Hashiro san was alone. Each time fractalization occurred, there were either two or three people observing. You and I still are both phenomenon. In other words, the conditions haven't changed. In that case, there must be some other variable. It's on the tip of my tongue. Then I hear a rumbling sound from Kurisu's stomach. Hungry? I haven't eaten anything since lunch. Lisa turns away as she looks at her watch. It's already eight. Just eat a banana. But only one of the two we just warmed. They are, after all, fruit of our experiments. Or you could take something from our stock of cup noodles. Don't want any? Since you've lived in America for so long, I guess you prefer fast food instead. Cup noodles. I'll have a cup noodles. I have to admit, I do prefer the Japanese word for cup men. Cup noodles? What flavour? There's soy sauce and chicken. Chicken, please. She seems in a mood to eat. Also, do you have a fork? Ah. Oh. To be fair, I wouldn't use the chopsticks either. But um, it's past midnight. At eight o'clock, the two of us silently ate noodles and warm bananas. Darius said he didn't want any. And ever since then, we've been examining the phone wave. I've mainly focused on the terminal mode settings through his X68000. The programmes Dow wrote all in wizard class though. They can't understand most of them. 
Bruce has been examining the AC adapter from the lab's electric switchboard for a while. Bruce stopped her when she tried to disassemble it from him. It's early morning, she still shows no sign of leaving. What are we looking at there? We got Madam Tokyo Tower plushie or figure. We got a pig, a penguin, Papa Pirate. That fairy looks more like Papa Astro Boy. A cat's paw back scratcher. Some manga. I like this bunch of stuff. But I'm kind of worried that the reflection of the pig is replacing the same way as a pig. Where is she staying anyway? She's been in Japan for one or two months and she all she did was say was go back to America this month. The trains aren't running so late, so I guess she might not be able to leave until she, even if she wants to. But in that case, why did she leave before the train stopped? Don't tell me she's plans to stay. No girls have stayed over at the lab. Miyui has a curfew, she always goes back home to Ikibukuro. Dow and I frequently stay here though, so it's not an exaggeration to say we live here half the time. Maybe it's normal for an American girl to stay overnight in labs. Christina. Christina. Is it okay to stay here this late? Perhaps you should contact your family. No need. Huh? Do your parents let you do whatever you want? Chris returns to me in size. That lab suit, lab coat really does suit her though. I haven't seen my father in seven years. My mother's in America. I'm living in a hotel right now. Understand? No. Huh? Living in a hotel? Well, true, renting an apartment just for a month is absurd, but... <laughs> you damn celebrity, if you're American, we should at least use a motel instead of a hotel, right? I'm not American, and there aren't any motels in the heart of Tokyo. What sort of a hotel? What do you mean? It's a normal hotel in Oshinomizu. Ochanomizu? You can walk here from here, can't you? Sure. I see, that's why she's flexible with her schedule. I finally understand. So, tell me about your father. Huh? Oh god, I just noticed just how adorable that... It looks because she's so... It, that coat is too big for her, but it's just adorable. You said you haven't seen him in seven years. Seven years? Oh no, it's nine years of new experiments. Oh bloody hell, next door's music still going on. Why do you care about my father? You're the one who mentioned him. Isn't it basically a hidden message saying, please give me some advice about my father, please? You're crazy. You are my assistant, and I can't let my assistant have any worries. So tell me everything that is on your mind. Chris who pouts and says no more. Instead, she glares at a circuit box on the wall. What's wrong? I have nothing to say to you. Oh, I know. Your father was a hero, but then he fell to evil, and now he wears a black mask and cape and goes, <laughs> And in the future, you two are destined to fight, and... I think I heard Kurisu's teeth grind. You're going to get a slap in a second, mate. You're really mad at me this time, aren't you? Don't make fun. She doesn't look at me, I. But her low voice tells me how mad she is. Are people's family issues like that. You're trampling on my heart. Could a father's situation be a landmine? Maybe I should apologise. I tried to think of words, but before I could say anything. Hell yeah! Dow's walkwise echo for the lab. Oh, looks like we got it. Dow, did you get in? Mission complete. Mission complete. Dow shows white teeth and a grin as he gives a thumbs up. 
I got a server man's ID and password. Now we can keep as much as we want. And the IBM 5100? That's separate, duh. The server admin's unrelated. I mean, it's a database that's normally made up of code. There's a limit you can access it. Doesn't look like even a lab director can access it. For our positions higher than that. There's something called a third executive council. Hmm. So you called it a council of her? What about it? It's a fitting name for our enemy. Kurita looks at me coldly. Whatever. Let's leave the IBM 51 on a database to another day. Run a search for data and time trial research. Okie dokie, that Z program we saw last time was suspicious, wasn't it? That. And the Jellyman's report. We couldn't get concrete information on either before. Creaser stares holes into a monitor. And I think we should as well, as we try and read out what's going to happen next. And you can find out next time. Bye bye.